Mr. Roger Akebong is the leader of the Southern Cameroon's Ambazonian Restoration Movement in Minnesota, USA. 2017 has been a significant year that started with him out in the cold, literally. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you guys for raising this call. We know it's cold in Minnesota, it's cold today, it's snowing. But you guys have come out today because of what is going on in our country. You guys have come out in this cold because you believe that this struggle is what you have to stand up for. I am very proud of you. This is just the beginning. We will be here every day or every time that we can make it. We will plan more meetings like this to tell Minnesota and to tell the world what is happening in Southern Cameroon. The lawyers and the teachers and other trade union organizations in Cameroon have picked up this fight for us. This fight has been going on for a very long time. Now it is a time for us to finish it. You can see most of your placards that you have here. If Mr. Ambe can turn the camera around, you can see those who have been killed. And all of us standing here today is to support these people, to tell them that wherever they are, you need to not die in vain. And I hope that the rest of Minnesota, those who could not make it today, they will hear those of you present here today and tell the rest of the world and tell Minnesota and tell the United Nations that it has unfinished business in the southern Cameroon. On May 20th, 2017, I sat down with Mr. Kebong and had a general conversation with him about the significance or lack of of the day, the struggle in general and the state of affairs in the southern Cameroon's Ambazonia itself today. I started by asking him to introduce himself. My name is uh, Roger Sakumbom and I come from Tingo. And uh, I am Augustine Ambe, uh, from Bafut obviously. Uh, only Bafut people answer the name Ambe very well. So <laughs> Nice to meet you, my fellow uh, Tuba County uh, resident. Yes, but, but that, was, that was in the past though. We don't have Tuba anymore, do we? Well, uh, you know, we always have to remember where you came from before you became Bafut and we stayed in Tuba. That is true. That is true. And that's, and that's really what uh, we're trying to reclaim the way we were, we were organized in the past. Because the way we were organized in the past was, was really bringing government to the people. Exactly. And that's why you had the villages, then you had the, the councils, mm -hmm. and, and, and then they had their native authorities. Yes. And they were taxed at that level and the money was used to improve that particular region. Exactly. So that's I, I think the whole restoration thing is is, is, is trying to bring us back. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we have gone full circle and we have discovered that what used to work for us in the past is what is going to get us through in this struggle. So we're looking for ways to go about organize the people the way we used to organize in the past and empower the people to get these colonizers out of our territory. Yes, what I used to say is that we were actually a free people and then they took us and put us into a, into a French colonial empire. Mm -hmm. And then what they started to do was, first of all, strip our freedoms mm -hmm. and then laid us bare. Mm -hmm. And then they came and took whatever they want. And I think they, they overreached. And now our people, they've, they've reached the wall and they have no choice but to fight back. Yes, yes. And you make an excellent point there because the reason the British had an indirect uh, rule system of administration in our territory was because they met all these checks and balances within our traditional cultures. Mm -hmm. Say for example, in the Jambuitin where I come from, the form that is head of the, the, the administrative unit in the village mm -hmm. has some check, he has a quick form. Okay. And in all of these villages around, and I think it is the same in the southern region, you have these checks and balances that were in place before the British came in. And when they came in and they saw those checks and balances, they built on it. Yes. And that is why you had that system of indirect rule. And that finally evolved into the House of Chiefs and all what you have as an administrative setup that the British left us. So we had something going for us already before these people came in. So they were not actually teaching us anything. No, no. Like I, like I already said, they, they were instead trying to, to diminish us so they can effectively colonize yes, us. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I mean, uh, uh, <coughs> that, that was a very good introduction. Um, today is really 20th May, and you know what 20th May is in the, in the history of the Southern Cameroon and Bazonia. Yes. Um, um, and, I, and, and the reason I, I chose to talk to you today is because you are the leader of the Southern Cameroon and Bazonia Restoration Movement in Minnesota. Yes. And um, 
and I uh, I know that this that that you've been very active, you've been very your leadership has been very assertive and very upfront. And I just thought that today is a good day that I bring you in and let me let me let me have you make a statement about May twentieth. What do you remember about May twentieth? Well, um, as far as May twentieth is concerned, it is one of those days that the fears of our forefathers, our grandparents and our parents who were before us were finally coming into fruition. The people who, who were very, very reluctant to go into this union with the Republic, May 20th was that day that reminded them that, that confirmed, not remind them, it confirmed to them that the fears that they had about the Republic and its uh, ambition or its goals were actually coming into place. So when May 1972 came, when Ahijo unilaterally dissolved the federal structure that was set in place in 1961 and instituted this unitary system, the fears of those who were not very comfortable joining the Republic started to come true. And they started fighting tooth and nail to make sure that this, uh, um, this unity thing that they were talking about, that was a system that was um, some kind of uh, a smoke screen, let me put it that way, a smoke screen to advance their policy of assimilation and colonization of the territory of the Southern Cameroon. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, um, it's May 20th was actually previewed never to happen. Yes. Meaning that they actually put in the fake constitution, because that was not really a constitution. It was not a constitution where we sat as a people and said, okay, here are the two alternatives. Let us make these two alternatives that we voted for to become enshrined in a constitution. Mm -hmm. It's the fake constitution that they had. They actually wrote there that uh, May 20 would never happen. Mm -hmm. May 20 would never happen without the decision of Southern Cameroonians uh, as a people, not as a, not, not as a, a unitary state, mm -hmm. including La Republique. In fact, Ahijo uh, at the UN said that they would never tamper with that because if they were to tamper with, with, with the state of Southern Cameroon, I mean, they would run us over. Yeah, and you, you make an excellent point there. And when you listen to some of these uh, people who talk about the constitution, I'm talking particularly about Issa Chiruma, mm -hmm. who is a spokesperson for the Republic. When you hear him talk about the constitution, how much they want to respect the constitution that is in place today, you just look at them and you laugh at yourself. Because the original uh, tapered constitution that Ahijo put in place mm -hmm. clearly stipulated that this structure, the federal structure, could never be dissolved. You could never dissolve that federal structure. So it wasn't up to the people of the south of West Cameroon or the people of East Cameroon to come. To, no, it, it was a structure that was supposed to be set in place on, in stone. Yes. So it was written in stone. Yes. You could not wipe it out. Yes. So there is no way for Issa Chiruma to stand up to them and begin to talk about a constitution. Because they started violating constitutions from the day this union came into place. Yes. I, I, there's, there's one thing I want to clear up front, okay? Mm -hmm. And the thing is that when we speak of Ahijo or Isa Chiruma, it sounds like we talk of an of an independent people who are who are initiating evil against us. I think we need to let let everyone know that it is actually the French who are engineering it because because to be and this is really an honest statement for me. I do not believe mm -hmm. that if if La Republique du Cameroon was an independent country these people will be as vicious to us as they have been. I think, I think they've never had their independence, so they are totally being engineered and coached by, by, by the French, who are not only doing it from a long distance because they have representatives on the ground. It, it, there is no serious meeting between two Cameroonians, if you want to use their word, or, or one Southern Cameroon and, 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 and a person from La Republic where there's no Frenchman in between. They call them cooperants. Yes. No, I, I agree with what you are saying. But the reason we are referencing those particular people mm -hmm. are the people who rep represent themselves, who pose as representatives. Those are, of, those are the faces we see. That, those are the faces we see. Mm -hmm. Those are the faces that people see in the Southern Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Those are the people they listen to on radio, on television. Those are the people who give instructions to the people to be picked up and locked up, brutalized and killed. 
So when we speak about them, and, and let me finish this point, mm -hmm. you make an excellent point that they are teleguided by France. But what I want you also to remember that that school of thought is very, very right. Where I differ with that school of thought a little bit is that you have people like Thomas Sankara and all the other uh, well-known African leaders who have stood up to France. Mm -hmm. Those people stood up to France because they believed in the sanctity of their people. Yes. They believed in the, the values of their people. They believed in taking their people, making their people grow into dignified people in their various countries. Mm -hmm. These particular people that we are talking about, they are stooges. Mm -hmm. So it is important that we make that differentiation. When, ah. we, when we talk about France, it is important to remember that these people have no national aspirations. They have no nationalism in them. Because if they had a little bit of nationalism in them, with all the education that they have, they have that ability to take a step back and ask themselves that what France is asking me to do to my people, is it right for my people? Those are the kind of questions that Sankara asked himself. And that is why he stood up against France. So we have to always put that in context. Yes, and uh, I, I was, I was, I was going to say that even though they are being teleguided, they are being coached, uh, they, they as human beings always have a right to say no, like the people of Southern Cameroon are saying no, not right now. Exactly. So yes. they have always had, so I'm not trying to say they, are, they don't have a blame. Obviously, they are sellouts mm -hmm. and they are, I mean, they totally betray not only themselves, but the whole African spirit. Yes. Because, and, and this is very serious because, and I, I'm going to say this very clear. All Africans who were colonized by the British, by the, by the, by the Portuguese, by the Spaniards, they've all freed themselves. Mm -hmm. France is the last colonial master in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I think just uh, picking on what you said, and I, th I think that um, it is a shame that Francophones are actually comfortable being colonial subjects, the only colonial subjects that still exist in Africa today. Yes, and, and we can have a whole show debating that. Yes. And I hopefully we can get some of them to come on the show and let us try to talk about this. Actually, I have been talking to some friends that I went to school with here who are from Togo mm -hmm. and all other French uh, colonies mm -hmm. who, are, who live here in Minnesota, mm -hmm. that we need to get together and start talking about these things. Because when we talk about these things as a people, from, as African people, it mm -hmm. has a different context. Mm -hmm. When we talk at, about these things as Southern Cameroonians and, like, and people who live in the like, Republic of Cameroon, they see it differently. Mm -hmm. And the reason they see it differently is because of the kind of education that they were given. Yes, I, I, I wrote, when you said something, I wrote education there because I wanted to come back to that. Mm -hmm. Because um, the education they have is education that is designed by the French. Mm -hmm. I think when you read the, uh, the Accord, de, Accord de Cooperation, mm -hmm. the, the, the cooperation agreements, mm -hmm. the French actually is one of, I think it's like the first line Mm -hmm. that France would design your education yes. and the education they have designed for them is the education of slaves mm -hmm. uh, and, and to be honest with you when you listen to, to, uh, to some of the debates that have been going on about our struggle these people cannot you know there's a, there's a thing where if you, if you start being educated they first of all start introducing a scientific thinking process mm -hmm. meaning that you have to argue based on evidence you argue based on a, a certain logic that guides thinking. Mm -hmm. so because you and I have to agree on something mm -hmm. in order to have a debate about that thing. Yes. And if you notice, they have never even agreed that we exist. No, they don't. They I don't agree that we have a history that is separate from theirs. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you start a conversation with them, they want to go and make uh, German colonization mm -hmm. the beginning of our history. Mm -hmm. And then, but I'm going to tell you something that will surprise you. I sat the other day, and because they do that all, all the time, I sat one day and was saying, okay, so German Cameroon was done with in Versailles mm -hmm. in 1919. Yes. Meaning, it was, take, the, 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 meaning it was taken out of, out, of, out of existence. Yes. As a legal entity or, or any legal territory. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. But somehow, even the French do not recognize that German Cameroon. Yeah, because they, they were part of breaking it up and dividing the pieces and like take your own and go with it. Yes, yes. But somehow these people think that they can go back and become Germans and reconstruct it and claim it because it was German territory. It was not the territory of La Republic. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. It was not the territory of Duala people or, or Garwa people or Ewondo people. Mm -hmm. It was a well, territory. Let me just finish this because it's very important. I want them to think about this differently. Yes. It's like it's like you own your land yes. and you have your sheep there, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You sell the land mm -hmm. and, and, and and the owner takes it and breaks part of it and sells. Mm -hmm. And then one of your sheep gets up one day and says, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Rogers is gone. He sold this land. He's taken off. But... but I am now. I will now become Rogers, mm -hmm. and I will now reconstitute all the territories. That, the people of La Republic never owned the German Cameroon. Yes, they were just subjects of it. And when the owners sold it and break it up, and they were gone, we were gone. Yes. So I, I'm just going to finish one thing. Yes. That even as a German entity, I was reading somewhere that it actually existed as a country only for two years, mm -hmm. and then the other two years were two years of war. Yes. And, and the thing was done. So there was really, and that's why you and I have never really heard anybody speak German or uh, yes. we only hear about German the same as we read any other history. Yes. So um, you can go into all this historical uh, perspective mm -hmm. and try to educate these people. Mm -hmm. I think the reason they, 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 they actually don't want to accept, they deny the facts because those facts are very uncomfortable. If you start going back, no, those are the, no, they 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 deny them because they are thieves. Yes, they don't want to deal. With, in fact, Cameroon is built on lies. Yes, so let, let build let me, on lies. Let, yes, let me finish this, because if you want to go, if you want to take their line of thinking, for example, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. they will have to go and bring in Central African Republic. We have to go up to Chad and bring in Chad because all of this, go, you have to build up all of that German Empire, right? So all of these uh, borders that we have today will really not exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. But we don't want to do that. The reason they are denying all these things is because that those facts are very uncomfortable. They are looking for a comfortable place. Yes. They don't have an argument to make. Yes. So they are looking for a comfortable place to try to argue how all of us yes. are one. Yes, but we were so, never one. No, we were never one. So yeah. the, the, the problem is we don't have to waste our time trying to educate them. Because uh, some people, even in my family, Mm -hmm. have said that God sent us to liberate uh, like the, 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 our brothers in the, in the east, no, east no, of the they're moment. not even our brother. I don't so, like that whole term so about listen, our let, brothers. Let me finish this. Let me f because that, that is what uh, it is very important for those who are sitting on the fence. This argument is very important because if people who were talking about education, mm -hmm. if people refuse to be educated, you can bring all the knowledge, everything that you have cited and put behind somebody and the person decides not to read and you read it for them and they decide not to take it in. There is really nothing you can do. Yes. And that is where the Southern Cameroonians are today because we have taken this. You can go back every single time we have tried to tell these people that, look, when this union was drawn up, Dr. Fallon started complaining right from the beginning, mm -hmm. right from 1961. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It came up to 1972, Abe Mukong. You can go back in line in day to Maza. Just go back and look at what all of these people that I'm talking about have done. Mm -hmm. As far as education and reminding the government in Yaoundé mm -hmm. of what was agreed upon and what is being done today. Mm -hmm. But they refused. They refused because they had an agenda, which is what we were talking about. Masterminded in France, directed from France, and executed by people in Yaoundé. Yes. So everything that our forefathers, our grandfathers, and our parents were telling them did not matter because they had directives yes. to assimilate, colonize, and take everything that we have. Yes. So we are gone. Where we are speaking today, the people, right, mm -hmm. are no longer political illiterates. The people, you asked about 20 May, the people have refused to come out and celebrate that so-called National Day because it is a lie. They, are, they have stood up, they have educated themselves, they are no longer political illiterate, and they are ready to take that power that was taken from them in the name of National Unity and National Day and be their own administrators and be their own people. Yes, and um, part of the reasons why we cannot deal with La Republic at the level of debate is because uh, they are more emotional Mm -hmm. rather than try to make sense. Mm -hmm. They're not arguing on facts, they're more arguing on emotions 
and and so we need to like like Riley said, we should move on. Um, um, I want to come back to Minnesota. I I know that we did not. Uh, uh, no, I wanted to, we eleven February. Mm -hmm. We handled it in town here as a day of. You, you remember what it was? Was it a day of mourning? A day of mourning, yes. Yes, I, and I think today. It's, it falls in that same line, mm -hmm. and so we are now beginning to 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 own the days that we want to own and discard those that are actually fake. Because 11 February was really uh, plebiscite day, mm -hmm. and then they they took and made a youth day. Yes. Instead of making it, if they wanted to celebrate plebiscite day, let them just call it plebiscite day. Yes. But they don't want to remind us about that. No. And so the 20th May. It's really the it's really the day that our rights were violated. Mm -hmm. The the federation that existed from from nineteen sixty one to nineteen seventy two was not really a federation. It was a mm -hmm. fake federation mm -hmm. because in federated governments, you you know, like like we talk about the government of Tuba and you know, it it's set up so that you have effective local governments yes. local that have economy. jurisdiction that they they have. Uh, absolute power to 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 govern mm -hmm. because that's the way it benefits people yes. it benefits the local people yes. and then it moves to the regional level mm -hmm. uh but but the federation that we had at that time was not was not really a federation because uh ahijo had the power to appoint and dismiss prime ministers in the southern cameroons mm -hmm. so it was so 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 this this whole deceit started right from then mm -hmm. um now I want to uh, let let's I want it all to start with 20 May because the, it is the day. Yes. But I want us to to uh, to go right from the beginning. You've been in the struggle for a while. Yes. And and I really want to I want I want to see. I, I'll do this in stages, okay? Mm -hmm. I I want to see what what you thought about this whole grounds the whole evolution that that brought us to where we are today since. Uh, beginning from the lawyers what did you think about the whole because we worked for a lot of years and somehow our struggle only remained in the diaspora it never really went down to the territory yes so yes. to actually see everybody in the territory be part of this in the way they are how how I'm, just just tell me what that does to you or, or where, where you are mentally about that you can see me smiling because it really sends chills down my spine mm -hmm. uh, but, but before let me address the issue of 11 February that we, the event we had in town here yes. and what is happening in 20th May. Okay. 11th of February, we call it a day of mourning. We were mourning because our hopes, that is the day that the British, as our former trust territory administrator from the United Nations, and the United, in complicity with the United Nations, mm -hmm. handed us to the Republic. Mm -hmm. Because you remember, you and I we were not there, but if you can look at the photos and everything that was done, when the British flag was taken down, the southern the, the, the southern Cameroon flag was never raised. No, it, the colonial flag. The colonial flag was raised. Was raised in the place of the British flag. Yes, and that flag, it was not handed. It was handed to Ahijo. Yes, it was never handed to Foncha. Mm -hmm. So you can see all those. Uh, uh, machinizations, all those plans that were put in place to make sure you can it so from the very moment of our so called independence, you can see what transpired on that day. So we were actually mourning on 11th of February the, lo the loss of our sovereignty, yes, the loss of our sovereignty because yes. that is when the pain began. Yes, today it is an insignificant day to us, mm -hmm. and that is why there's nothing happening in town today. The 20th of May does not mean anything to us. We had a duty to our forefathers and especially to those who were against this union with La Republic to do something on the 11th of February. Mm -hmm. Because that is the day we were supposed to be independent. Mm -hmm. That is the day the majority of every single pool that was conducted in our territory prior to 1961 had that option of independence as the most popular option. Yes. But unfortunately, when they got to the United Nations, it disappeared. So that was, and that, that was what the United Nations alongside the British did to us. So we had to be mourning on that day. So today, we are not doing anything as far as 20 minutes is concerned. Coming back to what the lawyer started and 
and the teachers. When I told you that this sense chills down my spine is because I was so elated. I was very happy. You made the point that we had just been talking to the diplomatic people, talking here abroad. It was like we had lost the people. When you go back home and you're talking to the people, it's like the people don't know what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. But if you watch the burial of one of those young men who was buried in Kumbu with our flag, and what some of the people who came for that burial were talking about, you could see that the people, you thought that that history, that the La Republic had succeeded in getting rid of that history. Yes. But you saw that history coming out at that burial ground, telling that young man who died that know that as we are burying you here, you died for a cause in which we believe and we are not going to let you die in vain. So the people have come around from political non-entities to experts who are actually taking a republic and sending a republic running up the hills in less than six months. Yes. So you can imagine that what these people thought they had succeeded in doing in 56 years, the people turned it around in six months. So I am very happy and I want to thank the people back home and congratulate them for the spirit because when we were speaking out here we thought that we had lost our people yes. but our people have shown us that they are resilient they are determined and we are going to take this until we get to independence yes and in fact when you talk about that i was just smiling because um we thought we've lost generations yes but 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 i mean that this particular revolution totally re-educated them mm -hmm. and so it would take it like it would take another fifty six years of trying to quench it, and I don't think it's going to happen. No, it's not. The genie is yes. out of the bottle. Yeah. So, yes. so um, now the next question that I will ask you is: How do you think? What, help me or help help our audience, especially those of us who are in the diaspora. Where do you think we are now since uh, November? November 8th, I think November 8th was the day that the, the lawyers made the speech and they, 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 they threw the tear gas and this whole thing started and then the manchos came in. Mm -hmm. so, so at that point we knew exactly who was in control. The lawyers were in charge and then suddenly they brought in the... Then the other groups joined, the teachers and the other trade unions and this whole thing went. Now La Republic, their tactic has always been that whenever there's a leader... They take out the leaders. If they cannot bribe you, they take you out. So those who those who we call our leaders today, if you go and if you go, you will find out that they're not really our leaders. Mm -hmm. Because any effective leader that comes, like Gojidinka, they kick them out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, the Mukons, they're out. The Ngumnes, uh, they're out. Mm -hmm. uh, or they're in jail. Mm -hmm. So tell me, since since this ground swell. Tell me where where do you think where where you think are, we are as far as moving forward? Well, I think the Republic did two things that worked for us. Mm -hmm. Because part of what we have been doing for all the years that we, they deprived us of opportunities, mm -hmm. and that's why you and I are sitting here in Minnesota. They threw the Dinkas out because the Dinkas did not want to toe the line. Mm -hmm. Or they were asking the questions and that should be asked. Yes, be they, asked. they didn't want to toe the line. Yes. Toe the line simply means don't ask any questions. Yeah. Sit and if, if, there, if some crumbs fall from the table, you guys can fight for it and, and enjoy it if you can pick up any of those crumbs. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they enabled us to be able to leave to fight another day, as Bob Marley would say. Mm -hmm. you know, we didn't run away from the fight, but we took, they took ourselves out to be able to leave and fight, to be able to keep that light burning, mm -hmm. to keep it in front of the international community, to keep reminding the United Nations that, look, you guys have unfinished business in the former British uh, uh, Southern Cameroons mm -hmm. that you guys merged with La Republic. So our, our presence in the diaspora has been able to keep that flame burning. So La Republic has able, enabled us in every single uh, dictatorship or whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. freedom fights and stuff like that the, the, what, the, what those governments, those oppressive governments know is that no, if you cut off the head which is the leader, then the fight is going to be over so if you lock up Nelson Mandela for 27 years, 
then the rest of black Africans in South Africa, they, they will not be able to do anything. That was not true. Okay. We live to see that that was not true. Yes. So when the fight is something that the people believe in, when it is the people's fight, it doesn't matter how many of the leaders you kill or you put in jail, those people are going to stand up. They are going to live to fight another day. And, that, and let me make this point. That is the difference between us the British, former British Southern Cameroonians, and the people in the Republic. When Ahijo and the French went after the Marquis and all those things, and the Omnibus and all the other people, we ran and came and we gave them shelter. Everything died there. Mm -hmm. They came, we took them in. They did not use our territory as a springboard to build themselves up, reorganize themselves, and go back to confront what they were running from. They came back and become and became comfortable and now have become instruments of the colonizers against uh -huh. us. So we did not do what they did. We are using this opportunity that the Republic has pushed us out of the territory as a springboard to be able to go back and fight the Republic. So they did us a lot of good. They did the struggle a lot of good. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I hear you saying is that we had leadership that created the grand swell. Yes. And that La Republic has dispersed that leadership mm -hmm. either into exile or into jail. Mm -hmm. So what I hear you saying is that there is no leadership now, but the people are continuing the fight. Is that what you're saying? Yes. The people, the fight is the people's fight now. There is no way, all of the, okay, for example, let's, let's look at this, right? Uh, Dr. Bala, uh, Dr. Fontaine, and all the other people, uh, 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 lawyer Ayapo who have been locked up now mm -hmm. before they were picked up by La Republic they were asking for a federation mm -hmm. right and I remember in one interview well, that I watched Bala was with one, I did this minister my, my barrel, one of those guys and he told him that look I am talking to you today about federation and you are calling me an extremist Somebody who's not compromising, somebody who doesn't want to listen. That's what Bala was telling him. When the time will come that you want to sit down and talk about this federation I'm talking to you today about, and you're calling me an extremist, you will not even find the people to talk with. So his prophecy was right. That is what Bala prophesied mm -hmm. when he sat in that interview and was talking to me, Bala. So the people, whatever leadership thought at that time, the people of the Southern Cameroon have said that the only thing they will settle for is the full restoration of the sovereignty of the Southern Cameroon that they were denied in 1961. Okay, I'm going to give you a proposition, okay? Yes. I can tell you one thing, that the people of Southern Cameroon have never been cowards. Mm -hmm. The people of Southern Cameroon have always delivered whenever they have a strong leader who comes and says, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you examples. Uh, when Foncha came and said, we don't need to be part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. the people of Southern Cameroon went with him against Nigerian interests and against British interests. Mm -hmm. When Frundi came up in the 90s and said, uh, we don't want this one-party dictatorship, mm -hmm. in the face of very brutal dictatorship, mm -hmm. the people of Bamenda and the people of uh, Southern Cameroon and Bazonia went with him and they won. Mm -hmm. They won whatever the victory was then. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there is no doubt that our people have, 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 uh, have proven that they can deliver any time. Mm -hmm. But the two examples I mentioned always had one single leader who came and said, this is where we, we're going. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm trying to get from you, and I think you've answered that partially, that the leaders have been scattered. We're trying to regroup would you agree that we're trying to regroup? Yeah, well... Because I'm trying to... I, what I'm trying to, to, to get... I want to get a sense of, of where we are going and who is leading it. Mm -hmm. tell, me, tell, me where, tell me how your mind is in terms of that question. Well, where we are going, what I know is that we are going to the mountaintop. Let me use the words of Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. And that mountain top is Boya Mountain that I'm talking about. That's where we are going. Mm -hmm. we, are not, we are never going to go back to La Republic. 
how we get there or who takes us there is not very clear at this moment. Okay. But what is clear is that there are people, a people of the Southern Cameroons have been re-educated again. Those who did not know about the history, those who were not cognizant or involved in the struggle like you and I, have been able to catch up very fast thanks to this modern technology and all what we have today. People can go on the internet, on YouTube, on, on Al Jazeera and whatever and read a lot of history. Mm -hmm. So they have been able to catch up very fast. So that leadership that we are looking for, we don't have a Nelson Mandela yet. Where Honorary Riba came up forcefully when he challenged the Republic in their own glass house. Mm -hmm. That, that is something that people are look, still looking for. The people of Southern Cameroon are hoping that wherever uh, the Honorable Weber is, that he or one of the people who are out here, because the people said, we have done our part. And I believe them. They have stood up, to, they have done every single thing that you and I sitting comfortably here in Minnesota have asked them to do. Mm -hmm. In standing up to the Republic, they have kept the children out of school. They have refused to participate in 11 February. They are not participating in Twitter May. They have participated in ghost towns as a sign of every single thing that we ask them to do. They have done it and they have done it well. In spite of, you know, all pe people, there were the naysayers who said, oh, uh, the people will not do it again because they had been let down by Fundi in those ghost towns and uh, the 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 three month emergencies in Bamendas, people are tired of those things. The people on the ground have proven them that they are lying. They are determined and they are going to do anything to take their, their independence back from the Republic and the United Nations. Okay. So the leadership that we are talking about, we are struggling right now as far as our leadership is concerned. And the reason we are struggling is because we are all we were never we were, we were all scattered all over the place so we have internal fights we have people who have been instigated or motivated by the republic to come and undermine the cause we have people who are reluctant our own brothers and sisters who are reluctant who are sitting on the fence who are not it is like let me give you the example when barack the former president obama launched his campaign mm -hmm. for president here in the United States in 2007. I, for one, I did not believe in him. When he started, in, in, when he, in that cold uh, February day in, in, uh, in Illinois and launched his campaign, where I watched it, I had watched his speeches, and I knew that this guy was talented. I was following him in, in Congress. But you did not believe that a black person would yeah, yeah. not, not just that the black people, but he was up against a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. But what he did was he believed in where he wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And when the people, the few people, I was not one of those people because I came on board later on. The people of Iowa saw something in him that I did not see. So maybe our people has one of those leaders like that. And because of our reluctance, because we have a tendency to question a lot of things, we are knocking down the knees of these leaders and discouraging them from being our Barack Obama or our Nelson Mandela or somebody like that. But my hope is that we as a people, no matter what we think, we should believe in ourselves. We can disagree on how we want to get to Boya, not on whether we are going to Boya. Let me say this, okay. Uh, just to make a comment about Barack Obama. I did not even... I didn't. I wasn't even following his campaign until the night after Iowa. That's in New Hampshire. I actually spent time to listen mm -hmm. what he was saying. Mm -hmm. But I, that was after Iowa had proven that he can actually win. Mm -hmm. But let me say this: You see, what is happening in our struggle right now is what normally happens in every struggle. Meaning that a groundswell comes, mm -hmm. uh, and then everybody wants to be a leader. Everybody shoots up. So, so these things are stages, and we are in stage two, mm -hmm. and in, and this stage two is not is not is not unique to us. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is in every struggle. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm trying to get you now to do 
and start telling me where you think some of the leadership I, 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 and why we're we saying this let's not let's not act as though there are no players right now mm-hmm. we did we do have Skakov that is that is a player mm-hmm. uh, in fact Skakov is the, is the main player right now mm-hmm. um, and you have uh, the other people who are in jail they're pretending to be because we know they are compromised I mean we cannot have leadership from behind the jail mm-hmm. so there are people who 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 are Providing leadership and, 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 and like you said, people are lined into crystallize mm-hmm. and they will move to the next stage. Mm-hmm. Um, what, 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 what is that next stage for you? Well, the, the next stage for me, as far as leadership is concerned, is we, we are still chained by the Republic. Or oh, let me clarify that. How do you think we arrive? Because right now we are really. I'm gonna look. I, I'm I'm really thinking that our population, like you said, has gotten the story. They know the problems and they know what the solutions are. So they're really mm-hmm. staying strong on their own, on their own determination. Because there's nobody out there cheering them. You know, SDF had Frundi who used to go out and SDF power, blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We don't have anybody doing that right now. Mm-hmm. We do have leaders who are saying okay who are saying let's not do this let's not do that let's not go for this ghost town and but as we talk there's a lot going on in the background mm-hmm. but in terms of in terms of our population they i don't think they are aware of that mm-hmm. so so i want i want you to start telling them okay so here we are now what is the next step what should they expect and, and i guess in telling that you also be Telling our leaders what 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 the or, or the potential leaders what the next responsibility is. Yes, yes, and you you make a very important point because the people cannot just be waiting indefinitely. So to me, the next stage now is asking La Republic administrators to leave our territory. That is the next stage for me because. Okay. Yes, that is the next. I think that will be the last stage, though. No, it's not going to be the last stage because if you wait, the last stage. First of all, let me ask you: Do you believe that there's a, a leadership vacuum in the struggle right now? There is a leadership vacuum. Okay. There is a leadership vacuum, and that is why I told you that we are depending on the people. Okay. Because there is no leader who has a clear cut, who has owned the struggle, and has defined to the people exactly where he wants to go there is actually no forum for the only leader that i can look at now that the people on the ground understand and that the people of the ground have seen is river and up to this point that we have we are talking it's not tassan no well tassan is a leader Mm -hmm. tassan has done a lot tassan actually is doing a lot of work now in the absence of river but I am talking about some. Oh, but but we were talking about West Cameroon, though. Well, it is. Let us wait. Let us ask him if he's still talking about West Cameroon today. Because if he's still talking about West Cameroon today, then he will not be on the same uh, pedestal with the people because yeah. the people have moved away from West Cameroon. So the last time he spoke, he was talking about West Cameroon. So we don't know if he still believes in West Cameroon today. Tassan is doing a fantastic job with Skakuf and all of that. The people are listening to him. The people are taking directives from him. The people that have a problem in my mind is us in the diaspora. That is where the problem is. Because the people have handed on the relay button to us to take the struggle and finish it. And we are almost dropping that button. It's almost out of our hands. Yeah, I, let me, let me, I'm going to cut in. I wonder when you go, when you talk about the diaspora, it's just separated. There's U.S. diaspora, there's South African diaspora, there's European diaspora, and maybe Asian also. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, since you're beginning to talk about that, I can tell you that the South African diaspora, I think they, 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 they've done really well. Yeah, no, I'm not And too. I'm really, and, and so the button that you, that, I just want you to, 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 to be a little more limiting in saying that the diaspora, because, because I agree with you, if we want to talk about the United States that we really have dropped, well, we're almost dropping the baton. 
Well, see, I, I am not going to go into those nuances of uh, categorizing who has done what and who is not doing what. I'm not going to do that because the people have asked us in the diaspora, mm -hmm. and I'm not. I'm not going to say South Africa has done this, Europe. Has, no, I'm not going to do that. And the reason is that I am challenging those of us sitting out here in the diaspora to do more. So when you start breaking things up, saying, oh, these people have done, see, then it lets people sit around and say, okay, let us let the South African people do it because they are better. No, that's not, I don't think that's what we, I, I think when you do that, I think it's more, it's more, uh, because at some point we have to take a look at, look at the, the, the spreadsheet and say who is doing what and what. So that way, people who are not doing well should know that you know what you you're not catching up. They know themselves. I, yes, I, they, they, and, and I really and, and we can talk about Minnesota here yes, since we are in Minnesota. Right? Yes, yes, and yes, they they even here in Minnesota there are people who are sitting on the fence. There will always be people sitting on the fence. Yes, yes, and the, what we need to let those people understand is that when you are sitting on the fence. What you are actually doing is that you are helping the, the, the other side. You're helping the enemy. You're helping the enemy, right? Because when you are sitting on the fence, you take a lot of people who have that divided mind sit along the fence with you, and then you undermine the struggle. So you might not say, well, I don't really know what to do, uh, so I don't know what to do. No. When you, when something is clean and clear, crystal clear for everybody to see, and you decide not to act, you decide not to see what for what it is, see it for what it is, and you sit on the fence. What you are doing is you are actually giving your you're giving comfort to the enemy. You're giving you? comfort to the enemy. Yeah, let me, let me say this. Okay, I think we. Uh, I, I want us to move to to some other topic right now, but 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 I want to I, I want to make this observation. Mm -hmm. Like I've already said before, I think what is happening to us in our struggle, there is in every struggle there's stage one, there's stage two, then there's stage three. Mm -hmm. And in that stage two, that, which is where we are, there's a lot of this confusion. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that we're going we're gonna to go to stage three very soon. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that so that we all don't, don't think that we're losing it or dropping the baton like you said. Mm -hmm. Because I think... Um, there are people who see faster, they, 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 they carry on like you. Mm -hmm. Then there's some people who want to make sure that it's safe before they do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some people who if you invite to come and sit here and talk, they will not. Mm -hmm. It is not because they don't believe in the struggle. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't just have as much courage like you do. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so we're in stage two and things are crystallizing. I think even, even in our leadership structure, uh, I think it's even crystallizing a little better now than it was like a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in, in, in December, we, we were, when we were out there in the cold, uh, we, thought, we thought things should be done yesterday. Mm -hmm. But I think that we are now actually, even you, I think you're now more sitting back and thinking about it more than you were very fiery a few months ago and you wanted everybody to do everything. Yes. You realize that, uh, in my chemistry, I used to know, they used to say that when you hit that when you when you when you steep when you produce a, when you introduce a a, a, stim, uh, a stimulant mm -hmm. uh, to to atoms they rise and perform above their level yes. and then when things are coming normal then they all drop back to where they need to yes, be yes, yes. so I think that but but the one thing we do agree and I think that's what excites you and I is that our people have crossed the, the Rubicon mm -hmm. our people know mm -hmm. they they they're not going to drink anybody's Kool Aid anymore no. and they they're not afraid of any guns anymore. No. Because like the public used to think that Emily would threaten them, they would fall in line. Mm -hmm. I think they brought all the weapons and pulled them back. They cut the internet and they restored it. I think they're running out of options. Mm -hmm. So our our people should just stay, continue doing what they're doing, and and continue to listen to each other. And we'll move from this stage. And then our leadership will also crystallize itself, mm -hmm. and that will be our stage three. Yes, um, the leadership thing is i mean you have a lot of people what what skakuf has put together mm -hmm. it is bringing people from all these various pressure groups that have been fighting the fight so those people are still out there even though skakuf has 
this structure that is in pool in place. Mm -hmm. For this, we would have sent their various representatives to come and work with Skakuf. But those people, like uh, the uh, Chua Yaban, the AGC, and the other groups, uh, the SCNC, they are still doing their thing. So what I'm seeing as far as leadership is concerned is that everybody, everybody who has been doing what they are doing, believe in what they are doing. So they are still doing that while Skakuf is there. Mm -hmm. And Skakuf is putting this uh, dynamic, uh, broad-based structure. Mm -hmm. You know, part of what they are doing is bringing, trying to bring everybody together. Mm -hmm. So, our struggle because it has been multifaceted, it, it has been fought by people at different times through different means in different ways, has not yet. A coalition behind a single, be it AGC or ANC or uh, SCNC or this or that, they have not yet coalition behind somebody like that, which is why I was talking about somebody like Riba because you could see the kind of responses that he got when he made when he stood up and challenged the people of the southern uh, of uh, like Republic to Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody like Tasang too is doing that, but you can see the kind of. Um, um, fights that people are throwing at him and the reason is because for all that we can celebrate about our fight and our resilience against the people of the Republic what is still hanging as the leftover vestiges of all those that colonization and stuff like that is trust mm -hmm. because you could see this tendency that people are still not sure or, or is this person from like I was reading when Tassan was responding to somebody who resigned from Skarkov in Europe and some a lady in Facebook said uh, it was tribalism because uh, uh, Tassan and Skarkov retained that guy as a member of Skarkov without consulting him people coming out and say oh Tassan should broaden Skakuf, so that every part, I said, no, it is not Tassan's responsibility to go out and begin to recruit people from the southwest or from the northwest, whatever you want to call it, to come and be part of Skakuf. All of us are in this fight, and you come to the fight no matter where you come from, and you put yourself at the service of the people, you put yourself at the service of the fight. And so, what is left over, what is holding back the fight? What is holding us back now is that trust issue. That, oh, it is maybe uh, that suspicion. Yeah, but it, it, it usually, like I already said, it usually happens at this level. And I do agree with, because look, we are in a fight right now. And what we're looking for is, if, is for our fighters to step forward and we'll follow them. It's not, it's, not, it's not for anyone to go and bring someone. No, it, it's a fight. Yes. And, and people come with it based on their own motivations. Mm -hmm. And this kind of leads me to asking you, um, you know, other people, there was a time when nobody, nobody even was thinking about the fight. Mm -hmm. But you were thinking about it. And, and I say that because I know that. Mm -hmm. um, the first day when it was cold out there, you were out there protesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, 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 you're not, you're not hiding. You're not, you're not hiding to fight like the public. You're not, you're not shying away from, from telling them who you are and what you want. Mm -hmm. I want to know what motivates you. What, why, why, why are you doing all this when other people are afraid? They are, they don't care, or they just want to deal with their individual lives. Why are you spending this energy and your own resources and 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 and, and staying in front of the fight? What motivates you? Yeah, that's a very, very important question. And I have, what motivates me is I have grown in this fight. I have had the opportunity to grow under the shadow of my father, who was very instrumental in this fight, Albert Mukon. There are, I will not blame people who have not probably had that kind of exposure that they have had to the fight. Mm -hmm. 
so i might not blame them that might not so yeah because they did not have the mo whatever motivated you yes they, they, they might not that is part of it the other part of it is that i know that we have li we were lied to and if you know that whatever you are living that you are living a lie you want to change that lie so i have read I have looked at it in every single way that you can look at it. It is a lie. I went to school in Banso, in St. Augustine. And I could, when I went to, to, to Banso in 1984, I, could, I, was, I was kind of jealous. Because I used to get up in the morning, take a pocket, go to the stream to fetch water in my village in Baba Kitungo. When I went to Banso, you could, within 10 meters, there was a public tap in every single place from Chakiri, where I, I stayed for a while, to Kumbu and all the other places. That in, they was, had running water. They, they had running water. Okay. Right? Every 10 meters, there was a public tap. So even if a family could not afford to bring the water straight to their premises, there was always a public tap within 10 meters of, of, of each other. And that to me was what you want to give your people. You want to make your people comfortable. But while I was still in Banso, uh, the, the water corporation that is run by La Republic, mm -hmm. Snake, they call it Snake. I didn't want to call the name. They came in and they managed to take over that water project that I understand was donated by the Canadian government to Dr. Fonda, to the people of, uh, of Banzo. Mm -hmm. And they took that project and they removed all those public taps that were within 10 meters of each other to make it impossible for the people to have access to portable drinking water to force the people to be able to go out and buy their meters and buy water from them so they should be paying a monthly bill. This is something that was given to these people for free, not by La Republic, by a foreign government like, like, like La Republic. And La Republic came and took this away from the people. My father was very involved with cooperatives mm -hmm. and I can start I went to school part of my school fees was paid by uh, proceeds from rice that we sold to UNBDA Upper Noon Valley Development Authority does it still is this still existing it is not it's gone I didn't think it would yeah WADA Womb Area Development Authority mm -hmm. is gone mm -hmm. uh, Medino uh, the um, Cameroon Bank uh, Power Camp you can keep counting them. Yeah, let, let's look. So, uh, you, so you, you, you're expanding it because all of these, all of these that you, that, that's a whole topic on no, its so own. Let, let, um, you ask the question of what motivates me. Mm -hmm. So when you look, I, I gave you that, I started from that story in, in, in Kumbu, talking about the water. So when I look at, some people have not had an opportunity to see those things. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, if you did not have that opportunity to be inspired by the people who raised you, these are some of the things that inspire me too. Because I see what belongs to the people, what the people can rightfully enjoy, that is being taken away from the people in order to punish them and exploit the little resources that they have. And that is what is motivating me to make sure that that should not be done to our people because our people deserve better than what they have gotten from this union with the republic okay okay so so here, here are two things that i gather that once you were, you were motivated by your father because he also had that bigger sense of justice and then you and and so and and, and give you that that sense already and you can already go around seeing that even though your situation may be better they're actually causing harm to everybody else and 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 that that sense of of justice motivate you. I, I'll tell you how, how I got it motivated. See, I went to CPC Bali, passed all my exams, 
went to Kasbambili, passed all my exams, went to University of Yaoundé, and it was like I was in China. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right from then, I started, I knew there was something wrong. Mm-hmm. Because I haven't crossed, uh, this will sound funny, I haven't crossed a border out of my country. I yeah, don't cross my dozen. <laughs> I haven't crossed a border out of my country to find myself in China. Lost. Yeah. Totally lost. Mm-hmm. People used to look at my book to get the answer. I started looking at other people even to understand what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I, my evolution, I started by blaming. Because when something happens to you like that, you, you, you start asking yourself some questions. Mm-hmm. Because you, you know. By the time you've passed your A-levels in Cameroon, you know yourself, you know yourself well mm-hmm. and you know your abilities. Mm-hmm. So at that level, you're no longer questioning yourself. Mm-hmm. You know you're a smart kid. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's an exam that is accepted all over the world. Yeah, so you know you're a smart kid. You don't have to go to chat to write it or go to uh, as these uh, French Cameroonians. No, that's, that, I mean, I personally wrote the London GC. I think we're the last yes, to write yes, the London GC. Yes, yes, the London GC. So, so you know that you're good. Yes. So when you find yourself in your own country in a situation where two things happen. Either they do not recognize that you're sitting in that crowd and you're lost mm-hmm. and nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Or somebody knew that situation and brought you in. Mm-hmm. And I started blaming the franchise. I started asking a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. And, and then this got aggravated by 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 the francophone population mm-hmm. they started calling us names they started calling us anglos if something went wrong oh anglo 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 you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. if a francophone slides and fall they call him an anglo mm-hmm. so everything ugly or clumsy was associated to anglos mm-hmm. and they didn't know what how that affected the anglos if you want to call us that in in in, in on campus I can tell you that some of what they're seeing now, it came from that. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was one of those who, who felt that and after the first year I was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I knew that I don't want any of our own people to be in that situation again. Mm-hmm. And I became very political and I have... And then obviously that motivation to now go and read your history mm-hmm. and find out how did we get into this? And then you start discovering things like uh, Gojidinka has taught all of us and uh, other leaders have taught all of us. History has taught us. Mm-hmm. And they start knowing that this has to change. Yes. Because, so you, you see, you look at the educational aspect of it. And you had that uh, awareness to recognize uh, some of these things that they were doing to us. It limited you and it limited a lot of the people that you saw coming after you. Oh, I lost, I lost years in my education. Yes, so you decided that you were going to do something about it when the time came. A lot of our people have not been able to transform those experiences in, a, in an, an awareness uh, kind of instrument to educate them on, on some of these things that are happening to the Republic. Mm-hmm. So, for example, we were talking one of those one after those our protests here. When I told people in the hall here that from Kumbo to my tree in Bamenda, mm-hmm. there are thirty-four police posts, police and gendarme. Thirty-four. Yes. Even in the war zone, you don't have that many. No, you don't have that many. Even you live from uh, Bafusam to Bamenda, you don't have thirty-four. 34.2 police control. So we're more police internally yes. than, than police in La Republic or yes. between us and La Republic. And between us and La Republic, yes. So if you drive around and you don't see that as a problem, so it is now that these things have happened and we are talking about it, that people are asking, oh yeah, wait a minute. So there's actually something wrong with this. Which means that at some point, our people had accepted this as a way of life. Yep, there's another control. Everybody gets their ID out that they are waiting for them to be asked or to get out of the car. Now you have to drive. The driver has to stop at the control. Everybody gets out of the car and then go through the police post and then go on the other side and then board the car. Okay, if I just hold it there, let me, let me, I think, I think our people need to know 
that in the United States, you can drive from California to New York, and that's, you, you're not talking about, you're not talking about a country, you're talking about actually a continent. Yes. You can drive from California to New York, unless you're driving above the speed limit, nobody will stop nobody you. Nobody will ask you anything. Yes. So people, and I'm, it's because, it's because you, you, you said people have taken their way of life. No, that's not, that's, that's not a way of life. Yeah, yeah, people, when I say so that... So people what, should know that it is not like that all over the world. Yeah, no, what I say that is that people have come to accept that, that it is normal. Yes. So, but now, when we are talking, like, I was talking to, in that hall to people living in the United States who have come, and they did not see... So when you start pointing out these things to people, you, you are talking about what inspired you because you had that awareness. Mm -hmm. But for some people... They just saw it as a limitation. You and I were some of the people who were fighting for an Anglo-Saxon university. We have to fight for... Why do you want to live in a country where you have to fight for everything? No, but look, I... It, live, okay. Sometimes, uh, look, I'm, I'm trying to really keep this particular show narrow because uh, if, we, if, uh, if we take some of the topics, can you imagine that English is the, like the number one language in the world? Mm -hmm. uh, but in Cameroon, when you speak English, it, you, it, it's, it's associated with something not very good. In fact, <laughs> I remember in Yaoundé, they made it so bad that you don't want to be identified as an Anglophone. Yes. What right. they call an Anglophone. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. But actually, it's only when you travel, then you see how actually primitive they are. Yes. And how lacking they are. Mm -hmm. No, you know, you don't have to travel. Before you, see, we have touched this before at the earlier part of the show. I have talked a little bit about their education, right? Mm -hmm. You can see that when you sit to talk to them, they don't have any depth. They are too shallow. Mm -hmm. These are people who were trained to believe that France is their home. Let so me let me say something, okay? I just want to say something about what you call shallow. Africans, as as general, are very smart people, mm -hmm. okay. But what has happened to to people in La Republique du Cameroon and also in other francophone countries is that their their educational program is is directed from France. And and I'm saying this, I, I, I'm 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 it, it's not scientific. It's just my observation, okay. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed, and I, but I've read a little bit about this, that the French have what they call um, um, Cartesian thinking, mm -hmm. meaning that if you tell them that this is a, a piece of paper, mm -hmm. they will say, well, I mean, they will say, well, I could, I could say that's not a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And so you spend time not, not agreeing that this is a piece of paper and then move forward to... to, to to make a decision about what pieces of papers do or don't do, mm -hmm. so that you actually accomplish something in life. The, and so that's why, that, so, so, so when you see, when we come to talk about our struggle, they don't want to accept the facts of it, and, and then you see them start saying, well, you know what, let's, let's not, let, in fact, they won't even use the word Southern Cameroons. No. So they're not only lying, but they've been taught to say that your point of view may not be the only point of view and so you spend time in going around something that you can actually say this is a rock and you pick a, an egg and it cracks or you pick a hammer and it will tell you you can prove that's a rock yeah so so when i don't want people to think that we're saying that they are dumb no the, the french have messed them up so much that and then including the fact that we, 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 our resources are allude to them, they don't want to let us go. So I already concluded that the whole of that is more emotional. It's emotional thinking. But I think that there's a reason why all African countries have freed themselves except Francophone countries in Africa. There is a reason. <laughs> well, the Having said that, let me, let me add this. Because I think we as Southern Cameroonians have a responsibility and we need to know that we are, that Southern Cameroonians are the most um are the most qualified people mm -hmm. to talk about France in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the Francophones, they are, they are, they are, the Francophones, that's all they know. So mm -hmm. they've accepted it as a way of life. Yes. 
But we came into that colonial empire as free people mm -hmm. with a liberal, very progressive education. Mm -hmm. And so we saw it. And part of the reason why it took us 56 years before we we're doing what we did is because, first of all, we went there and we saw it. We expected them to be like us. Mm -hmm. It maybe took like 10 years before we realized that they're not like us. Mm -hmm. Then we said, okay, let's teach them. Or let's try to make sense with them. It took us another 20 years to do that. And um, by now, we just know that these people are not, they, they're done. We're done. We're done trying to democratize them through SDF. We're done trying to accept their blows, thinking that at some point they will, they will realize that we're humans too. So we've done everything. And now we, so I want, I want our people to know that we are the most qualified people in Africa. I mean, you and I'm, let, me, let me just finish this, please. I'm saying that because I've spoken with Nigerians, right? They do not believe, Nigerian and Ghanaians and even Kenyans, they do not believe that, the, that we still use colonial money. Yes. They do not believe that there are French people running our army. Mm -hmm. They do not believe, in fact, they do not believe some of the things that people in La Republic take for granted. And when you talk about colonial money, it is good for you to explain to our guests what you mean by colonial money, because when you just throw it out like that, People sometimes don't understand. Well, I, I have an econ I'm a, I'm, I am an econ major, so I can I can spend some time talking about that. Basically, the money that we use is French money. It's money coming from their treasury. So so Cameroon, as a country, does not have control of its fiscal policy. Yes. Because you you it, it's it, you manage your currency. You manage your fiscal pro Based policy. On, if you own your currency. If you run your own currency, so it's not our currency. Not only that, for each dollar that we earn, they keep, well, I was reading somewhere that they keep 50% now. They keep it. They keep it in their treasury. They keep it in their treasury, and then if they want to loan it to it, us it, again, it, they it loan it. It is not you talking about it. It is their former president, Jacques Chirac, said it just so recent that uh, if you ever do away with uh, French Africa, France will not be a country that it is. Yeah. So it is not us saying it. It is the French themselves saying it. So... Um, to try to elucidate whether you were saying that if these people look, I don't part if you want to respect somebody, right? You have to be able to look at it from what is this person's capability or intellectual capability. I'll give you an example. Recently, we had uh, an event in town here. That the promoters invited uh, this francophone artist Gaya Larut, and she came to town in the midst of everything that is happening. Even if, as an individual, she believes that Cameroon should stay united, Minnesota would not be the place where you will walk into the hall and say Cameroon is one and indivisible. I don't know if you heard about it. I no, I wouldn't even go to such a concert. I wouldn't even attend so, that. So, so, I, so that, that tells you that those are people... Or she actually said that. She said that. So those and, are, and, and, the, and the show continued. Yes. Those are people... I challenged her. Those are people that don't have that intellectual ability either you are so full of yourself and you don't even know where you live or where you are that you can blot out some well your your, your 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 own brothers brought them to town well isn't it anybody can do whatever they want right it is culture anybody i see i don't and this is something that we can discuss for that sometimes um the, the we have lived i enjoy music from south america from colombia uh, all over the world i enjoy music from cuba i've never been to cuba right because i love the culture so music is something else music has no boundaries there are people who enjoy rap music in Cameroon and they are rapping and doing all those things they have never been to America. Let me tell you something, Epa. So, oh, so let, let no, me finish. I, I, hold your thought. I know you can hold the thought. Let me say something here. Mm -hmm. And I want to say it because of what you just said. When La Republic took us over, mm -hmm. 
we're listening to reggae, we're listening to high life. That's the music that was in the southern Cameroons because mm -hmm. we're part of Nigeria, Ghana. You know what they did? Mm -hmm. When they took us, they, 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 first of all, Manfi was like the, the leading town in the, in the southern Cameroons. Mm -hmm. Okay? They refused, they cut off Manfi, mm -hmm. cut off, did not, so they cut us off. And when they cut you off, mm -hmm. they not only cut you off through destroying your economy, destroying your government, destroying your, when it came to culture, they totally smashed it. Mm -hmm. And that included the, the music. So if you think that you're going to tell our people, hey, you know what, we're done with these people, but continue to listen to their music, continue to buy their ice cream, and continue to watch their TV, continue to... No. You need to let them know that, and I'm saying this because of me, right? Mm -hmm. I have a lot of... I love the, the music of Manili Bango, And I may continue to listen to Manili Bango only because he's way more international, okay? Mm -hmm. But that your typical Makosa, that you may think that I'm just literally my cousin, but it comes with so much there, and but, the, but unconsciously they eliminated what was yours mm -hmm. and then planted that. Mm -hmm. When Southern Cameroon was still Southern Cameroon, we used to have the Kumba Lido Bad band, mm -hmm. there was Bali Modern Jazz. Mm -hmm. If you think those just died because they couldn't do no, they were they were killed. Yes. Okay, yes. and you kill them by not playing them, playing them on the radio, by not promoting, by them. not promoting them, by not giving them the help. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So don't. So you'll not catch me attending that concert. Yes. In fact, I think there was a. I think it's Beretta News that did write that francophone musicians that haven't supported our show because they come to the United States every summer and milk from us. Mm -hmm. If you think that they only milk us back home, no, that is part of their exploitation here. They come and we they come and put the CD and and, 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 and play. they don't even bring bands because they come and play the CD and show up and make money. Mm -hmm. We need to cut that. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that the people themselves. So I I, I cannot hold myself and say that those are people that don't have that ability. Either you are too full of yourself or you don't even have that little ability to understand where you are. Yeah. No, she's sitting with Anglo fools. Yeah. If you go and ask her, she would think that if you don't talk to me in French, no. tue, it say tue, but I mean, you know, I never knew, used to know that when they say tue, but I mean, that it means you're stupid. Yes. I, so when I left the place, they've even developed more that has even come crashing. It's not just that you speak English, it's that, oh, you're from Bamenda, you're stupid. But, but it's Bamenda that has changed, it's given, Bamenda has given them way more rights than they could ever dream in their whole life. Exactly, exactly. I always, I want, I always be proud of Bamenda. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I grew, I'm an Abakwa boy and I will grow nowhere else. If you ask me where should I be born again, I'll be born in Bermuda. I want to say, I want to, I want to, I want to change this topic a little bit. Our people have spent a lot of time, uh, even our lawyers, they've always thought about going to, to international forums, going to the UN and all these and they've been doing this, I think, since 1960. In fact, since, since, I mean, you know, we have been part of an international territory. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why we always think, tell me what you think about all these trips to the UN and looking to the outside for our salvation or for our liberation. Is, is that something we should continue to do? Is there, is there, um, is there some, some savior that's going to come from the international community? No. Uh, I think we have exhausted all of those avenues to, to solve our problem. Because if you listen to even to the UN people, I think they refer to our problem with, I think there is a, I think it's in Inner City Press, there's a guy on Inner City Press. Yes. That has been he's, very, he's very, very nosy. And yes. He has been pressing the United Nations and he has even run into problems because of that. And at times, if you listen to some of the things that he posts, the UN clearly defines our problem as a local problem. So if somebody that you are looking to to be an arbitrator comes and tells you that no, your problem is a local, he has already taken sides. Okay, so 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 having having decided that that because we've been looking we've been we've been looking to the UN for too long. Mm -hmm. So what do what should we do? 
Well, um, I was talking to... Since the UN is not coming through... Yes. Uh, in fact, in fact, it's, it's created in a way that we can't even come through the door. Mm-hmm. Because yes. you have to be something else to even come through the door. And, and I think that's what makes like, the public think that we are wasting our time. But let me say that I want to make, I'm going to make a statement. I, I, I want to, I'm trying to, to hold what I'm thinking and have you talk, but I'm going to make this statement that, you know, the power of government is only second to the power of God. Mm-hmm. Okay? And politicians believe that they can play God. And when I talk of politicians, I, inclu- I also include these international organizations. Mm-hmm. But they obviously are not God. Mm-hmm. And that's why anything that has moved in our territory has been moved by our action. Mm-hmm. And so when I ask you, because our, the old, our, our fathers and our forefathers still believe very much in that process. Mm-hmm. And I still hear too much of it going on in our territory right now. Mm-hmm. So I want us to be realistic about it. Because anything, in fact, anytime the UN says something about us, it is because of actions that we've taken on the ground. Yes. So it seems to me that our destiny is still in our hands. Mm-hmm. The only time the UN will come, they'll come because they are forced to, and they'll be coming only to certify what we've already established on the ground. Mm-hmm. So I want you to articulate that or say in your own way, because that's, what I, that's really what I think. No, you're perfectly right. What you've said is, is true. And you can go back from, you can go back and look at the UN Charter, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, uh, Article 76B or something like that, if I'm right, that says that um, trust territories are going to prepare trust, uh, they are going to prepare trust territories for independence, like the British government, mm-hmm. that was a UN trustee, mm-hmm. was going to prepare the trust territory to, for independence. Mm-hmm. Or self-government. Self-government. So the UN itself violated its own charters mm-hmm. by not letting us self-govern ourselves but handing on over to, to the Republic. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing. Mm-hmm. And they have decided not to recognize that. I, I, have, I have watched documents where in the 50th anniversary of uh, uh, whatever, there was some UN delegations that went and handed two maps to Mr. Beer. They have never explained to, to anybody what was the significance. People have tried to draw um, an analysis and you know, draw conclusions from that. Nobody knows what the UN was thinking. And the UN has followed up by saying that our problem is an internal problem. So I don't have anything to ask the United Nations anymore. Because the United Nations, to me, is an instrument of colonization itself. Mm -hmm. It works for those for whom it works. Right? If you look at what the UN uh, peacekeepers have done in Central Africa, right? There was a French guy, I think he used to work for the UN, I've forgotten what his name is, who was fired by the UN because he went out of the chain of command to complain about what the French soldiers were doing to the children of Central Africa. So the organization itself, instead of protecting the children or the country that it's supposed it fired somebody who blew a whistle on them. So the UN is not an organization that I can trust with my life. You have to be able to fight. I want you to tell me any country in the world that has had independence signed by the UN and given to it. So let me ask you this. So what, 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 um, so what should our people be doing? Our people should be prepared. And let me say this. Our people should be preparing to get La Republic out of our territory. That is the only language that the UN understands. And that is the only time that the UN is going to come in to fix its mess. There is nothing like, go, even if we have to go to the International Court, or we're going to the International Court, or to the World Bank, to settle what the Republic has taken for us for all these 56 years. What they have stolen from us, what they have exploited from us without royalties, and all of that. Those are things that are going to be sought out in court. 
what we have to do is to ask La Republic to leave our territory. France did not just uh, leave the battle, Dien Bien Phu, right? Mm -hmm. those, those people had to fight to get France out. France did not just leave from Algeria, right? Russia did not just leave from Ukraine in 1956, right? So all of these countries had to fight. I listed one of these countries to one of my, uh, my elders here who was telling me that, oh, we just have to go to a diplomatic mission because uh, La Republic will crush us if we try to fight La Republic. Well, you have quoted the Bible here. I think in the Bible there is that battle of Goliath versus uh, David and Goliath, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you look at South Africa, Nelson Mandela, ANC and the government of South Africa, how many arms did the government of South Africa bring or what kind of ammunition did they bring to every single ANC protest? Look at Sharpville in 1976. Soweto, look at all those places, all those Soweto massacres, Sharpville, look at all those places. Look at the amount of ammunition that they had. Did, they, it, did that hold back the people of South Africa? No, it did not. It did not. Look at the, uh, the Algerian crisis. Yeah, the Algerian civil war. Yes. Yeah. No, it wasn't civil war, war of independence. War of independence. Yes. Actually, they, had, they wanted to throw the French out. Yes. Did, with all the sophisticated, did that stop the Algerians? No. It did not. Okay, you can move from there. I've talked about South, South Africa. I've talked about uh, Eastern Europe, the, 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 the Soviet Empire. All of those countries, Lech Walesca in Poland, and all of those people, they knew what they were standing up to when they were challenging the Soviet Union. But they did not fear the Soviet Union because of what the Soviet Union had. Our people have proven. And the only thing that is going to liberate us from the Republic is that we have to fight for what we believe in. You ask me what inspires me. Mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela has said it. Dr. King has said it. When you live in life, there is something that you have to believe in and for which you, are, you can be prepared to die. For which you are prepared to die, okay. And the people of the Southern Cameroons, including myself, have seen this struggle, that it is a just cause, it is right, it is our duty to fight for our own liberation and self-determination. And like I already told you, um, uh, that the people of Southern Cameroons have never shied away from a fight. They're not cowards, and they have never been frightened. So, um, and, and we can continue the strategies of our liberation in, a, in another show. I really want to thank you for, for taking the time to come. I, I'm sure that we'll continue to bring you in so that you continue to share what, what makes you become who you are in our struggle. Uh, obviously, it's not about liberating yourself because you're outside the place, you're doing well. I'm sure your family too is doing well. So, so, so you continue to also let or help other people be able to uh, think much further than themselves. Mm -hmm. Because when you make your environment better, it also makes your own life better. That's right. And, uh, and with that, I want to thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you too, and I want to thank you for having me. I want to thank the people of Minnesota for being so instrumental in this struggle. You know, we have not talked about a lot of what Minnesota does, but Minnesota that's another show. But but we we're, we're 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 dealing with the big picture, and I thought yes, we should go with yes. it. Yes. Thank you, thank you for having me, and um, long live Ambazonia. <laughs>